In this Photoshop quick fix video, we're going to take a look at some easy ways to create your own custom web graphics and web buttons and things like that that you can use. And uh, we're going to do so pretty easily using the path tools and blending options or layer styles. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is choose the rounded rectangle tool. And I'm just going to draw what you would see as a typical buy button, okay? And we'll make it, well, doesn't really matter what size. We'll basically go with a size about like that. And you can see here that, you know, typical solid color red, uh, we can make it any color that we want. Um, I'm going to click on the color, and actually, I would prefer to make this a gradient. We want to make it a gradient. And uh, I'm going to start off with, since we have the red selected and there's the black there, I'm just going to make it a, a black to red gradient. But I actually want to switch these two. We're going to just click the reverse color button here. And I don't like the black, so I'm going to double click and choose a darker red so that we still have some contrast between the two colors. And um, let's see, I think that's all that we're going to do for right now. That's our basic shape, okay? Everything else that we're going to add to the button, we're actually going to do using the uh, blending options. So I'm going to right mouse click on our paths layer, choose blending options, and we're going to start building this button in some pretty cool ways. First thing we want to do is add a stroke around it, and uh, I'm going to reset that color to somewhere in the middle. And the reason why I'm picking somewhere in the middle is so that against the light area it'll stand out, but also against the black or the darker area. So we want a middle of the road choice so that we get that contrast between the two. And we may make the button or the uh, stroke just a little bit bigger, maybe four pixels for now. The next thing we're going to do is uh, choose satin. And uh, satin's going to give us a pretty interesting effect, except that we definitely don't want to use the black. We're going to choose a lighter pink, something like that perhaps. And we can always change that color. And we want to change the blend mode from multiply to screen. Now, when you play with the satin, uh, you can do some pretty cool things with angles and I want to reset this angle to 45 degrees and start playing with the distance and the size and you'll notice that as we start playing with those two we can control the curl and how that appears and I think I'm going to increase the screen up probably closer to 100% I want this to really stand out perhaps something like that somewhere in there Maybe we'll cut it back just a little bit, but not that much. So uh, the other thing we want to do is turn anti-alias on. And for contour, we're going to choose this bottom left one. So that actually changes the appearance a little bit. We'll go in and fine tune this just a little bit more. Okay. The next thing we want to do is choose bevel and emboss. And what we want to change the settings to is increase the size so that the um, the shadow and the highlight areas are part way down maybe a third of the way towards center or halfway to center but we're actually going to turn the multiply off completely or almost completely we don't really need the black influencing the bottom or we can turn it down about 15 percent and choose our darker red It'll let us do that here. That way at least the color is consistent. And we're going to brighten the screen area a little bit. And so what we're after is to really give it a bit of a glow. So it almost looks like glass. And we can sharpen it up a little bit by 
increasing the depth slightly. And the last thing that we're going to do is uh, give it a drop shadow. So I'm going to choose drop shadow. Um, I'm going to turn off use global light and change the angle to 45 degrees and increase the size and maybe turn the uh, blend mode down to about 50%. So that's just a subtle drop shadow. Okay, so that's basically it. You notice that our button has changed pretty dramatically compared to where we were from that to that. Now, the next thing that we can do, which is really exciting, and, and you know what, actually, I think I'm going to change the stroke back to uh, three pixels, just take a little bit off there. So now that we've done all of that work, I wanna show you something that's really cool. I can right mouse click and choose copy layer style. And then we can actually create another shape. I'm gonna choose custom tool. And uh, we have uh, a lot of choices of arrows, like perhaps this one here. So we can use that to draw an arrow if we want to draw attention to, you know, buy my stuff. And because the last uh, shape that we created using paths had the blend, it maintained that blend here. Now check this out. Since I just copied all of this work that we did on this button, I can simply right mouse click and choose paste layer style. And it automatically applies it to our new button just like that and of course we can go in and tweak it but you can see where that would actually save us a lot of time and of course you can vary this effect like for instance you can uh, go in and uh, remove the satin so that it has a more straightforward approach I just kind of like <clears throat> how the satin gives it kind of a, an electric feel to it and of course we could even change the color so there's a lot that you can do to vary it but that's it literally any other shape that you create or want to create using paths or even the marquee tool uh, we could do the exact same thing with a button let's just Let's choose the ellipse tool. I'm just going to hold the shift key down and draw a circle. And actually, let's create a new layer and handle it that way. So there's our button. And uh, it didn't pick up the gradient this time. But let's just see how this works without the gradient. I'm just going to right mouse click and paste the layer style and so you can see even still it has a, a pretty cool effect to it although in this case I would likely uh, go in and increase the bevel a little bit so that it looks more like a round button soften it up a little bit more we can make it look edgier by choosing uh, hard and soft chisel or just stay with smooth and we can even uh, affect the cha the uh, shading by choosing one of the contours which really gives it a completely different look so there's a lot of options that we have that we can make adjustments to fairly quickly same with the satin just by changing our options here can give us some pretty funky effects, some of which we may not want to use, but that's okay. And of course we can go in and change the angle of our satin. So perhaps in this case we want it to be say straight up 90 degrees and a little bit more pronounced.
So as you can see, there's a lot of options just to create a button very quickly and easily.